Hey guys, this is E with Scrapbooking with me, and I'm going to show you what we're going to make today. You're going to need a piece of cardstock that is 12 by 9, and you're going to score it 1 half inch and 3 and a half inches on all sides. And this project, the bottom of this project, the box bottom, was inspired by the Posh Paper Lady. I liked how she did that box, so I was going to make some of these for Mother's Day. I'm doing mine a little bit different, the top, and you will see in just a moment. So that is the scoring on this. That's one half and three and a half all on all sides. Then for the top, you're going to need a piece that is four and one eighth by seven and one eighth, and you're going to score at one half, oops, one half and one on all four sides. So one half and just make sure that you're scoring as straight as possible. That's going to make a difference in how your lid fits. So one half and one. And whoops. Try to score straight too. Okay. Now we're going to lay the top side and we're going to go ahead and fold and burnish on all of our score lines for this. Okay, we have all of that folded and burnished and now we're going to cut away some pieces. Let me grab my scissors. So we're going to cut away these three pieces. We're going to cut those away. And I'm going to angle cut that just a little bit there and that a little bit there. And then we're going to cut up on this piece. And then we're going to angle cut that. So take a little wedge out of it. Okay. Then you're going to go to the other end and you're going to do the same thing. Okay, so that's what we have on this side. And we're going to turn it around and do the other side the same way. Okay, so that is what you have. And now we're going to glue the little box bottom together. So you're going to put glue on all of your tabs. This is going to pull up and glue right there. And you're just going to match that up with that side. over and get your bone folder. Go in there and squish your glue down. Okay, then you're going to do the other side the same way. Okay, so there's the bottom of your box and now you're going to need some pattern paper to cover your box with. And I am using the paper from our May Kit. I love, love, love this sheet. That's going to be the front. And let me see. I'm going to make sure I got the front. This is the front side. I think. Yes. So I'm going to put this on the front. And then two of the pieces on the side. And then this is going to be the back. Alright. For these pieces, you're going to need... This is cut at... Let me see. This is cut at two and three quarters by four and three quarters. So the front and the back mats are cut at two and three quarter by four and three quarter. And I don't 
don't know if there's an up or down side on this paper, so I don't think there is. So we're going to put that down right there. It leaves just a small border around it. And then we'll go ahead and put the back one on, and then we'll put the sides. Okay, your side mats are cut at one and seven eighths by two and three quarters. Okay, now you could possibly use either one for the front, that's up to you. But I'm going to use this one for the front because I've got some decorating that I'm going to do on it. Now these pieces we're just going to fold back for a minute. I love how Sherry from the Posh Paper Lady does her chipboard on the inside of her boxes and things. It makes it a little bit stronger. Now, you can do this or not. You don't have to put the chipboard in there. That is strictly up to you. But I want to make this really strong because I'm going to put some goodies in here that's got a little bit of weight to them. So I'm going to put the chipboard in there. Now, I have just cut my chipboard and then I've covered it with the same cardstock that I have here. This piece for the bottom, I'll tell you what size it is cut. It is cut at one and seven eighths by four and seven eighths. That's our bottom piece right there. Okay. Then you have two side pieces that are cut at five by two and seven eighths. Okay, I need to trim that off a little bit. There we go. Whoops. I know I'm sitting my bone folder down on that glass again. Okay, let's try this one before we put glue on it, and it fits perfectly. It all depends on how you cut your edges, how you cut on your score lines, and then how you glue everything together. It all depends on how your pieces are going to fit. And then we have two end pieces that are cut at one and seven eighths by two and seven eighths. I'm going to try that first. And we're going to need to trim a little bit off. I'm going to go ahead and try the other end because I'm pretty sure I'm going to have to trim it too. And I'm taking probably an eighth of an inch off of them. So. Alright, let's try that again. And that one's still going to need to be trimmed just a little bit. Okay, now you can see we have a really sturdy box. Thank you, Sherry from Posh Paper Lady, for giving us those tips. Now I'm going to go ahead and trim off just a little bit more of an angle on these sides just so that they'll fit down in there well. Okay, that should work. So I just trimmed a little bit more of an angle off of the sides the ends of these so that they will fit down in there better without making any bulk. We're going to go ahead and put glue on these. And then you're just going to fold those pieces over and press them down your bone folder. And see, that covers up the edges of your chipboard. So you don't have any chipboard showing. The inside looks like that you just have a nice liner in there. <clears throat> now we're going to do as she showed us. And she said to run your bone folder across this top. And it just kind of flattens out that top edge of your box. Makes it look a little nicer. 
So there we go. There is our box bottom completed nice and sturdy. Now we're going to do the top. So we're going to fold and burnish all of these score lines. Now what you're going to do on this is you're going to cut up, let's just do it this way. You're going to cut up on this score line, cut up on that score line. And then you're going to take that part right there away. I did a little bit of angle there. And then this part right here, that little tab. So you're just going to leave one tab right there. We have done these tops many, many times before. Okay. Cut away that. Cut that end tab off. And then we're just going to angle that. And then I'm going to go back and angle these little tabs just a tiny bit. Just makes them a little bit easier to fold over and everything. Takes out the bulk in there, so just a tiny bit is all you have to do. Alright, so that's what we have right there, and we're going to do the other end the same way. Now, this chipboard piece is the same size as the one that we put in the bottom here. I just cut this at, let me see. Uh, this is one and seven eighths by four and seven eighths. I'm going to measure to make sure that I'm not telling you wrong. One and seven eighths by four and seven eighths. And I'm going to go ahead and glue this on before I put the box together. We're going to glue it down just like that. And I'm just keeping it evened up between those score lines. Press it down, and now we're going to put some glue on these little tabs, and we're going to glue that together. Now you're going to put glue on these pieces right here, and you're going to glue them on the inside. And if you put your chipboard down just exactly in the center of all of your score lines, then you should be able to push this down in there right at the end of the chipboard, like that right there, and then press it down. See? So we will put this one in there. And see, it, it's a little bit longer, but if you push it down in there, it goes right in beside your chipboard. You may have to use your bone folder to kind of go in there, but it'll work. That just makes everything a little bit stronger. Do the same thing here on the end. Just push it and it should snap right in there. So just like that. Okay, so we've got that finished out. Now, the moment of truth. If we scored this right <laughs> and if we folded it right, it will fit on the top. But if we didn't, it's not going to fit. And it fits perfectly. Now, I'm going to show you a trick that I have so many people that message me and say, when I make my tops, they don't fit. They're a little bit loose or whatever. I'm going to show you a little trick on how to make your tops fit if they're a little loose. Just cut some little strips, a couple little strips. And just make sure that they're the length that you need. And trim that off. Just slide down in there on the end and glue it down. If you make it the same color, nobody's going to know the difference but you. See, I got my little tab in there on the end. Doesn't show. If you need to do this all the way around, you can. If it's just a little bit too long, you can do that too. You just put your little wedges, I call these little wedges, put your little wedges in wherever you need it, need to to make your box top fit. See, mine is still a little bit loose. I don't want it to pop off. So we're going to do this again. Just going to put another little wedge in there. Because the, one of the reasons that your box tops sometimes fit and sometimes don't is because we don't always cut that score line exactly like it needs to be cut. 
on a box top you need to cut on the score line exactly and sometimes we don't sometimes we cut a little bit outside of it or whatever and that makes it to where they don't fit perfectly but you can always put your wedges in there I learned this from doing woodwork years and years ago there's always a wedge that you can put in to make things fit and see you can't tell that I'm putting any wedges in there but now my box top fits perfectly so we are ready to move on and decorate all right, for this top, I have cut a piece, and I'm pretty sure it's cut the same size. For the top, we have this piece that's cut at one and seven eighths by four and seven eighths, and we're going to put that right on the top, center that up right there. So that is our top. Isn't that cute so far? All right, and now we can decorate. That's the most fun part. So I have got this that I want to put around the top of this box. This is a piece that was gifted to me a long, long time ago by a friend that lives in California. So I'm going to hot glue that right around through there, the top of this box. I'm going to take it off to do this. That, that's going to hold it. But I'm going to put it right around through there, around the top. So I'm going to run a bead of hot glue right at the top. So there's the top. That part's decorated up. Get back on here. Isn't that cute? Oh, I like it. Okay, now we're going to put a piece on the top that will help it pull up. This is another piece that was given to me by a friend from California. And I think I'm just going to fill this with hot glue. It's going to take quite a bit in here because this has got a crevice in it. And then again, you could put these on with E6000 if you wanted to. And lay it right there. Hold it down for a second. Isn't that pretty? That's going to be the little top pull. I'm going to use this piece of ephemera. It's also from this May kit. And I'm going to ink around it just a little bit. I want it to stand out a little bit more than what it is. So I'm just using a, this is called Angel Pink ink. there but I'm going to put it on pop dots. Right up there, like right that. Then I'm just going to take some little flowers from my stash and I'm going to put these on here. Oops. I'm going to make sure that I drop it down enough that it's not going to interfere with the top going on. There we go put the top back on so that we'll make sure that we don't put these too high. Then I've got some of these little, these are resin tulips. We're going to put those in there. All of this is from my stash. Put one right there. side like that and then I've got some little uh, resin roses that I'm gonna put in down here at the bottom I think I'm gonna put one there and one right there and I'm just gonna tuck them in under that little sign that we've got there so I'm gonna trim the wire off of these little leaves and I'll put them in there too I think you've got three or four leaves in your kit. It's just some that I had in my stash and I wanted to share with you guys. But um, if you don't have 
enough leaves if you want to put on the outside you can always just cut you some let's see I think that one will look good right there and then let's go ahead and glue these in there I'm going to show you what you can do with these little wires that are on the end of your flowers. Don't throw these away because you can use them. Just take a little paintbrush, something that's really, really small. Wrap that around there. Pull it off. You've got your little curly cue. And you can take these and decorate your piece up a little bit more. There we go. You see your little curly cues right here? And it is finished. There is your nice sturdy box that you can put just about anything in. And that is it. Alright guys, that is it for our tutorial today. I hope you enjoyed this. I will have these measurements over on my blog along with yesterday's project's measurements. I ran out of time yesterday and just didn't get it done. But I will have these over on my blog along with pictures and things so that you will be able to make this too. I hope you enjoyed it. We'll talk to you later. Bye.